I'm E.A. Tischler, founder of the New Horizons Golf Approach. Today, I want to talk to you about a concept I call exiting. Many golfers like to work the ball, and I think one of the best ways of working the ball is being able to make the same backswing as you go back, the same backswing or downswing as you come down, and then from there, learning how to exit through the shot so that you can create different trajectories and different types of ball flight. So, if I were to play a shot towards you in the camera there, and I got set up, and I went in my standard backswing, came down in my downswing and my standard downswing and moved into impact, I'd find it impacted via a certain angle that I create between my arms and my hands. Some people have lower hands and some people have higher hands in the golf swing. Wherever that angle is at impact, if I can continue to go through the ball and keep that angle as I go through, that's what I call constant exit. Constant exit produces sort of the ideal ball flight for any individual. It has the right amount of launch and the right amount of penetration, the right amount of spin, so you can control your golf shots on a regular basis. All right. If we want to play a shot lower, as we come through impact, what we do is we extend and we keep our arms, hands, and club extended and low as long as we can. So that's what I call exiting out. I'm trying to exit out in a very extended manner where I keep that club head and those arms very low in the fall through. That's going to help me play a low shot. If I want to play a shot higher, as I come into impact and go through, I want to feel like I exit up. I exit coming up with more angle between the shaft and my arms in the follow through. That's going to launch the ball very high. Think about playing a lob shot, what I call a cut under shot. If I play a cut under shot, I'm going to get that club to come back up, re-hinge very quickly and very vertically, and that helps me get the ball up in the air. So if I want to launch the shot over a tree, I can get set up and make my standard action coming into impact and from there just exit up more and I'm going to launch that ball higher. Now, constant exit also plays the ball very straight. So if I want the shot to go ahead and curve, if I'm going to have a curve with a draw, what I want to do as I come through the ball is get the toe of the club to release and I get the toe to come around. So I call that towing out the exit. So come into the ball the standard manner, tow out the exit, I'm going to get a little bit of draw on my golf shots. If I want to play a fade, I heel out the exit. Once again, I come into impact and as I go through, I feel the heel lead the toe throughout the exit process. And by doing that, I get a little bit of fade on there. So once again, I can control different types of trajectories and different types of ball flights just by focusing more on exiting and try to, instead of trying to change my whole swing. My uh, inner game coach was Fred Shoemaker. When I was in college, he'd have me swing to the top of the backswing. Once I got there, he would say something like draw, and I'd have to play a draw. He may say fade, I'd play a fade, or low, I'd play it low, high, I'd play it high. I learned that I could go back the same way every time, and of course, because of the way reaction time works, I'm going to go back and I'm transitioning in my standard swing. So by the time I get here, I'm doing my normal thing. However, on the way through, I would change my exit so I could get different types of ball flight. And he told, showed me that I could do it in a very natural and athletic manner just by exiting instead of trying to manipulate my backswing and my downswing. All right, so let's see how that works. So if I have constant exit, I get set up and I'm going to keep that angle as I go through the ball. So I try to maintain constant angle during my exit. I got a very straight, very good trajectory type golf shot that time. If I want the shot to go lower, I'm going to exit out this time. I'm going to keep my arms extended and my, my arms and club very low. I go back the same, come down, and exit out. So that golf shot went much lower than my standard trajectory. Okay, when I want to play a higher shot, I'm going to go ahead and exit up when I come through that shot. And it's going to allow me to play the ball much higher than normal. I get set up. I do my normal thing as I go back and transition. From here, I want to exit up, coming through. Okay, by exiting up a lot more that time, that ball launched a lot higher than my standard trajectory. Okay, Again, I can get myself to play low shots, high shots, or constant shots just by changing that exit. I can also play draws and fades. If I want to play a draw, I just go ahead and tow out that exit instead of doing my constant standard action. Okay, by towing out that exit that time, I had a nice draw. 
I want to play a fade, I'm going to go ahead and heal out my exit. Okay, that was a wonderful heel out exit and I had a good fade that time. This is one of the reasons why you see professionals tell you to check your follow through. By checking your follow through and noticing your follow through, you'll know what type of ball flight you have. We see the drawers, they tow out that exit, so when they go around, they tore to wrap their follow through around them a little bit more. We see the heel out guys, the shaft comes up and more vertical this way and they're holding it more in this position in the follow through. We see the constant exit people, it's more vertical and it goes more right over the shoulder. So if you want to play it low, we keep that low follow through. If you want a high, the high follow through. So you can see that concept of checking your follow through is actually the result of either having a constant exit, exiting out, exiting up, towing out your exit, or healing out your exit. By knowing what sort of exit you have coming out of that impact fix zone, you're going to know what type of ball flight you can create. Okay, the next concept I want to talk to you about is what I call exiting. Exiting is a swing technique that can help you learn how to control the trajectories of your ball flight. There are three basic exiting actions we use for controlling the height of our, our golf shot. The first one is what I call exiting out. What you want to do is get the sense as you swing through the ball that you straighten your arms and the shaft out in a straight line and you keep them as low and as straight as you can as you move into the fall through. The straighter you keep that line and the lower you keep your arms, the lower that golf shot's going to go. Now in general, we're also going to move the ball back in the stance for this. You know, again, in this situation, I'm trying to play an extremely low shot instead of just a little bit lower than average. To play a little lower than average shot, you can simply move that ball back in your stance. So here we go. I'm going to move that ball back. I'm going to exit out and play a nice low shot. You can see I've kept my arms extended here. The arms in the shaft made a straight line. Now it's actually pointed a little bit below, parallel to the ground. That shot went very low. It was a nice penetrating shot I could use into the wind. Living in here in Hawaii, that's a great shot to have. Okay, the next one is what I call constant exit. The idea of this is that when I'm moving into impact, I have a certain relationship between my forearms and the club shaft. As I move into the fall through, I want to keep that relationship between my forearms and the club shaft all the way through my, my full fall through. If I can do that, I'm going to get the constant exit. This shot's going to allow me to play a shot on a medium high trajectory, and when it lands, it's going to land nice and soft. It's going to jump up in the air and stop very quickly near to where it landed. Let's go ahead and make one of these constant exit swings. So that time I had a nice constant exit. That ball flight was medium high. When it came down, it landed, jumped straight up in the air, and it sat down nicely. So once again, if you want to play a medium high trajectory, as you move through the ball into your fall through, all you want to do is get the sense that you're trying to keep that relationship between your arms and the club shaft as you go all the way up to your finish. Okay, the next one is what I call exiting up. In the exiting up swing, as I go through the ball, I want to re-hinge my wrist as soon as I can. So the sooner I re-hinge those wrists, the higher I'm going to play the shot. It's just like what we do when we play a lob shot. So this is, is just launching it a lot higher. I'm playing this with an 8-iron, but if I need to go up over a tree and still play it the full distance, I would simply exit up as I went through the shot. OK. 
Okay, by rehinging my wrist that time, earlier in the swing I was able to launch that ball very high. Keep in mind, the other thing I'm going to do with this shot is I'm also going to move the ball slightly forward. For the, the constant exit shot, I use the standard ball position for whatever club I'm using. Okay? To exit up, I move the ball a little bit forward. To exit out low, I move the ball back. I'm going to do one more exit up here so we can see what that looks like. Okay, once again, I launched that one nice and high, but still went the full distance and land nice and soft when it got there. I would have been able to play that ball up over an extremely high tree. So if you want to play the ball higher, go ahead and work on exiting up. Now what about drawing and fading the ball? There's two basic techniques with this as far as exiting is concerned. As the club goes to the ball, if I release the toe first, it's going to help me play a draw. If I make sure my heel leads to the ball first, it's going to help me play a fade. So let's go ahead and play a couple of these shots and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and, and release the toe first. I'm going to toe out the exit on the first one. Okay, that was a nice toe out exit. I had a good bat, about five yard draw on that one. I take that shot anytime when I need to draw. Okay, so what about the fade? In the fade again, I'm going to lead the heel first through the ball. And I get a sense that even as I go into the fall through, I'm actually still trying to feel heel first. You know, it will catch up at some point. But again, the concept is I'm trying to lead with the heel through the golf shot. That was a good heel first exit. I had a little fade on that one again, about a five yard fade. Now, I did push that one a hair, and it's not because of the fact that I was heel first necessarily in that swing. In that one, I actually dipped a little bit as I went through the golf ball, so that actually made me slide forward, and the more forward I slid, had more shaft lean. That's actually what, what got that foot face aiming further out to the right. I'm going to do one more of those, see if I can get a good heel first shot here. Alright, that heel first shot was really nice that time. I take that one any day when I want to play a fade. Alright, so if you want to use exiting in your technique, you can go ahead and exit out for the low shot, move the ball back when you do that, use constant exit for your standard shot, exit up for the high shot, move the ball forward, you can tow out your exits for your draws and you can heal out your exits for your Alright, I have one more drill today. This is something you can take out of the golf course that will help you get better rhythm and stay more relaxed when you're playing your golf shot. What I want you to do is what I call the awing drill or the awing swing. I'm going to move closer to the camera so you can hear this here. As I swing, I want to make sure that I'm exhaling the whole time. And what I'm going to do as I do this is make the sound. Uh, I want to keep that awe uh, as deep and relaxed as I can as I swing. We hear a little bit of inflect, uh, inflecting 
in that all that time. Still, if that was the worst one I had all day, that'd be okay. Uh, that was actually a better all that time, even though the swing was actually swifter through the ball than the first one. Now, the first thing I recommend you do is that you actually do this at home for a while, okay? And as you're doing it at home, you can do it in slow motion. You can, you know, just get the sense of how you're going to awe as you're swinging. Uh, Now you're going to find that most likely somewhere in your swing, your awe is going to cut out. You're going to have tension. You may feel something like this. It will be very obvious to you when you create tension in your swing, when there's too much effort and there's too much tension in your swing. So when you can get to the point that you can actually awe consistently back and through with a nice, relaxed, deep awe, you're going to find that your golf swing is going to fit your body mechanics perfectly. Okay, so you know the goal is is first do it in slow motion, then do it in regular motion. If you can do it at home first, then you can take it out to the golf course and, or the driving range and play some shots. So I'm going to play some shots now. Hopefully you can hear this off as I'm doing it. Alright, again, in that all, I had a little bit of straining at the bottom. I give that about a seven and a half on a scale from one to ten. Alright, that one was a really good all that time. Golf swing felt great. Contact was really good. Launch was great. That ball went a long way. So, what you're going to find out, the better your all, the better your swing. First, learn to all at home where you get a sense of where you're creating tension, and you can figure out how to get rid of that tension just by doing your awing training. Take it out on the driving range, do some awing out there, you're going to notice the better your awe, the better your shot. When you feel good enough with it, you can actually take it out on the golf course. Now, when I do this on the golf course, I awe, but I do it under my breath. I never play a golf shot on the golf course where I'm not awing. If the awe is silent, it's myself, I'm just exhaling the whole time so I can feel whether that swing is nice and relaxed or whether I'm creating tension in the swing. All right, once again, I had a nice, deep, relax on that swing. I was able to play the ball a long way. Okay, to recap today, first thing we worked on was the fundamental skill of understanding how to get our target-oriented follow-through. So if you can get the sense of that swing point swing drill and get a feeling of where the club's pointed, when you make a good follow-through, you can understand what a target-oriented follow-through feels like for you. The next thing we talked about was your swing path, understanding how your right forearm acts in the golf swing, and we related that to where your extension is going to be so you can get a sense of how that will help you understand where your target-oriented awareness is. The next thing we talked about was your exiting techniques to control your ball flight. That's something, again, you can take out onto the golf course with you. Lastly, we talked about awing. Awing is a great drill. I think it's one of the two best drills you can do. If you can awe perfectly as you're swinging, then your swing is perfect for you. I hope you, you're able to take some information away from these videos and help you learn to play the best golf of your life. Hi there, I'm E.A. Tischler, founder of New Horizons Golf Approach. Today, I want to clarify a concept that confuses people a lot of times in golf. 
when professionals play a low shot, we often hear somebody say, oh, he played a punch shot, or oh, he played a knockdown shot, oh, he played a cover shot. Well, what's the difference between these type of shots? Are they really all the same just because the ball flight goes low? Or is it that we produce an action that produces that low ball flight? And different actions will produce different types of low ball flight. For example, the hitter uses much more of a punching action. That's thrusting that right arm through the ball and doing so in such a way that the angle at the right wrist is staying at as much angle as possible as it goes through the, through the shot. That gets the hands in front of the ball, that gets the club de-lofted, and it gets us so that we can play that nice low shot. So punch shots are really thrusting shots that perform with the right arm thrusting off the right shoulder as we go through the, through the ball. Now in all these shots, I recommend you move the ball back a little bit. Even though you can do them more forward, it just makes it easier if we move the ball back a little bit. So we get set up. If I'm going to go ahead and play a punch shot, I'm going to utilize that right arm to take the club back and to thrust down through the shot. So by utilizing that thrusting action, I can go ahead and punch that shot nice and low. Well, what's the difference between that and a knockdown? A knockdown shot's actually played with the body. What the golfer does is they move the ball back in their stance, they take the club back and get the arms connected to the body. From here, the body is going to rotate through that shot and the club's going to be more de-lofted, but it's the body that's actually knocking it down. So it's basically the same thing as setting up with your normal stance, moving the ball back in your stance, go ahead and get connected, and then rotate through the shot. Now the knockdown shot will typically fly a little bit higher than the punch shot. It'll have a little less spin on it. So when it lands on the green, it'll want to release a little bit more. The punch shot will tend to go lower and have a lot more spin on it. So if you need a low spinning shot, you're better off actually playing a punch shot. If you want a shot that flies a little bit more medium high into the wind and it, it lands on the green and releases back to the pin, I recommend you use a knockdown shot. Well, we also have another shot that I call a covering shot. This shot's actually utilized with the hands. The hands purposely set that club in a de-lofted position and hold that club in a de-lofted position as we come through the ball. So we'll see players will actually do this. Tiger Woods does this in his stinger. Instead of moving the ball back, he actually keeps the ball up in position. However, he utilizes the hands to cover that shot, to get ahead of that shot as they come through. So this is more of an arms type of shot. Instead of a, a thrusting shot, the arms and the hands are just utilizing that club head in a de-lofted manner and they're trying to shallow that arc out through the ball so that we can play lower shots. So this is what we call more of a covering shot. This time again that ball positions more forward instead of way back. Now I can play cover shots with the ball back also, it'll just go even lower. However, a lot of golfers that use covering shots prefer to go ahead and get that, that ball a little bit more forward because they're trying to get their arms and hands forward to get their arms and hands to do the job instead of either thrusting or utilizing rotation they're actually getting the hands to do the work we will also get a tendency for the golfer to get a little bit of weight shift into this shot so this is a thrower will often cover it more than he will either punch it or knock it down so here we go that ball's a little forward i'm going to let my weight shift sort of move with this one like i would in a weight shot i'm going to utilize my hands to go ahead and cover this one Okay? So once again, that shot's going to fly on a different trajectory. What I recommend you do is you go out and you train them. You find out, are you better covering it with your hands? Are you better moving it back, being connected and knocking it down with rotation? Or are you better just getting that ball back and thrusting down on top, punching down on top to play that low shot? Whichever one you're best at, I recommend you use that one on a regular basis when you need to play a low shot into the wind, to play it under some trees, any situation that requires that you play a low shot.